Sniping in Phantom Forces is one of those things that a lot of people have trouble with. This can either be because they struggle with drop, don't know how to hit moving targets, or simply can't hit a single shot. Well today I give you the full up to date guide on how to snipe in Phantom Forces in 2021. This video is divided up into 4 segments listed on screen. So if you're here for aiming tips or strategies, then check the timestamps in the description or just look for the segment on the timeline. But without further ado, let's get into it! The first step to sniping is knowing what kind of sniper you're using. First off, there are two kinds of snipers in Phantom Forces, bolt action and semi-automatic and knowing the difference between the two is important for various reasons. But real basic, bolt action snipers are the snipers where you have to pull the sniper bolt back every time you fire, which cannot be done while being scoped in, unless you have a straight pull bolt, more info on that later, however. Whereas automatic snipers can freely fire regardless of you being scoped in or not. But more importantly is knowing what range your sniper is most efficient and slash or good at. Basically all of the snipers can be divided into groups that determines which range they're best at. So I've divided them into three groups. Cross map snipers, long range snipers, and mid range snipers. Cross map snipers explain themselves. These are the snipers that can easily kill enemies from the other side of the map. The long range snipers are the sniper rifles that can't quite cross map but work well at like 250 to 300 studs. Mid-range snipers are the ones you really don't want to use for ranges under a maximum of 150 studs because they simply have so much drop or are really hard to get solid results with at long ranges. So keep this chart in mind if you want to perform as optimally as possible as some snipers may be more effective than others depending on how big or small the map is overall. For attachments, then you're probably going to be changing up a lot compared to what you probably have on most of your other guns. As I said earlier, knowing the difference between bolt action snipers and semi-auto snipers is important when putting attachments on your sniper. Bolt action sniper rifles are the ones you want to avoid putting the usual compensators or muzzle brakes on as they simply don't benefit the gun in any notable way. This is because the way bolt action works is once you've reloaded, then your crosshair has already centered itself again. On the other hand, the semi-automatic snipers are the exact opposite because they function very similar to DMRs, meaning they greatly benefit from the usual muzzle brakes. Now on the other hand, bolt action sniper rifles perform well with very different attachments compared to the other weapon classes in the game. For bolt action sniper rifles, what you want is speedy attachments. Attachments like the skeleton grip, retract or remove stock are incredibly good on snipers because the faster you are, the faster you can kill people and the more hard it is to kill you. Speaking of speed, while on the more expensive side, straight pull bolt is the ideal attachment for sniper duels. Because if you both miss a shot, you can easily retake your aim because you don't have to be zoomed out to load another shot, meaning by the time they peek again, you've already aimed in and you're ready to fire. Oh, and if your sniper has access to long barrel, then try to go for it, as long barrel is just a direct upgrade from stock. Now most snipers can kill at close range with a torso shot, meaning you're not completely screwed in close range. But if you have a hard time quickscoping then I fully recommend putting a canted sight on your sniper. This way when you're in close range combat you have a more clear shot at them with a lower magnification sight. Last up I recommend staying with the stock ammo type on most snipers. This is simply because most ammo conversions are more or less a downgrade from the regular with little to no actual benefit. There are a few exceptions out there like the op conversion for the AWM. Extended magazine for the Mosin and .416 Barrett on every 50 cal sniper. Now knowing what maps you can actually snipe on is another important step. Because if you go sniper on maps like Bazaar and Metro then you won't get much done and you will die way more often as those maps aren't really sniper friendly nor do they have any notable sniper spots. I'm going to brush over this rather simply, so if you want a more in-depth video explaining this more precisely, then I recommend checking out the video I've linked in the top of the description. So first off, let's just list off the maps you shouldn't even consider sniping on. Bazaar, Elevation, Jungle, Locker, Mall, Metro, Rig, Industry, Warehouse, Laboratory, Farmlands, and Rust Belt. These maps are simply too small, have too much cover, or don't have any sort of sniper spots whatsoever. Then there are the maps that have a varying degree of success. Blizzard, Ravad 911, Suburbia, Crane Sight, and Highway Lot. 
so let's go over the sniper spots for each map. On Blizzard, the most notable spots are the hospital, the civil buildings on the right, the police station, and lastly the garage. On Ravat, the most notable spots here are on the roofs of the factories, the widely known sniper hill, and by the tank next to what I like to call the pipes. Suburbia, while only having one spot, then the house roofs actually work quite well and only have a few ways of being countered. For me, Cranesite isn't the best sniper map due to its lack of good spots. The only really notable spot is the parking building roof. I'm not going to say the crane because it's simply the most dangerous spot and in my experience doesn't work at all. All info is the same for the revamp. Highway lot is also a tough one because half of the server usually stays inside meaning sniping is going to be a little dry in terms of kills. But some notable spots are the parking building roof, this spawn point, and the billboard for spawn camping sometimes. Last up we have the dedicated sniper maps, the maps where sniping was definitely the main focus. Might as well list off the most famous one first. Obviously, Desert Storm. And the best spots here are this little sand hill behind the building, the oil rig things, and whatever these things are. Now Dunes has a really good cross map sniper spot that many people don't know about. It's on the left side of the gas station spawn and it's one of my all time favorite sniper spots. Not only is it really hard for enemies to get to you, it's also very far away meaning if they aren't using cross map snipers then they are going to have a hard time trying to kill you at range. Now since Mirage has many variants depending on the game mode then I'll go out and say that do not snipe on Mirage unless it's team deathmatch. Seriously. But back to the spots. So some good spots for Mirage is the unexpected angles where everyone isn't such as here, here and here. Now for the segment most people probably are here for, how to actually snipe people. Now I'm going to divide this into three sub-segments, general aiming tips, how to deal with bullet drop, and lastly moving targets. Let's get into it. Now the first aiming tip is to lower your sensitivity. When you're sniping, especially at longer ranges, you want to be precise. You don't want to have trouble centering your crosshair on your target's head, so by lowering your sensitivity, you're going to become more precise, which again is very important at longer ranges. Second is only steadying right before shooting, but also steadying in general. Many people have the habit of steadying as soon as they scope in, resulting in you using up the entire bar before you're even ready to take the shot. The second part is mostly for low ranks who haven't quite realized that they can steady their sight and not just have it wave around on the screen. Third tip is moving while aiming and only stand still right when you're about to take the shot. In sniper duels this is even more important, but in normal situations, moving around can potentially mess up your aim and can cause you to miss shots you would have otherwise hit if you stood still and were more precise. Fourth is forcing yourself to go for headshots. Obviously, sniping is all about headshots, so forcing yourself to go for headshots is a good way of getting better at sniping. Like even if you hit them with a body shot and another body shot would surely kill them, then just go for it anyway. Lastly but still quite important is to be relaxed while playing. The more stressed, shaking, or whatever you are, the less accurate you're going to end up being and the more shots you're going to end up missing. So just remember to be relaxed, go to a nice spot and just click on heads. To illustrate this, then just sit back, relax, and enjoy this footage showing the ideal sniper game.
Now, drop is one of the very major things that most people have trouble with when sniping next to moving targets. First off, it's most important to learn the drop of the specific rifle you're using as there is a big difference in drop between every sniper. While I could go and say go ahead and the ballistics tracker, then I'm not going to because the tracker is not a good way of learning the drop. And I'm just gonna go out and say this now. Drop is a guessing game and it all comes down to intuition. Really, you're going to learn the drop of your rifle better if you go with intuition rather than using the tracker. Now to arguably the hardest part for a lot of people, moving targets. While easier said than done, moving targets is a prediction game. You have to predict where your target is going to be a second ahead and shoot where you think they're going to go. Now again, depending on the velocity of your rifle, you're going to have to aim more or less ahead. Mid-range snipers require you to aim far ahead, while cross-map snipers almost don't even have to aim ahead at all. But on that note, most of the time you may have trouble getting your crosshair to the target, so instead of trying to get your crosshair to their head, try to just sit still and let their head come to your crosshair. You may think it's silly at first, but sniping is all about prediction, and this strategy works so well if you predict correctly. Seriously, forcing yourself to slow down and let the heads come to you, it almost feels like you're doubling your accuracy. Well, that's it for this guide. Hopefully now you know everything you need to know about sniping, and hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. If you found this video useful, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, as making videos like these is my passion and I want to keep doing this in the future. But until next time, peace.